on this episode of Clinically Pressed, we're at the Grand Ads Half Marathon, which has happened last weekend for us here in La Crosse, and we're with Dr. Kyle and Jill O'Brien, who um, all of us were providing soft tissue treatments for the participants afterwards to help jumpstart their recovery. So we did an on-site um, podcast talking about just that, runner's recovery, and some of the simple things we see uh, that people can do to help recover uh, from the race and there's a lot of people that were running this one today um, on that day and then another one another half marathon the next day so uh, it can be very grueling but uh, there's a lot of things you can do to help prime your body for it and so we talk about that in this short episode uh, we also want to mention with that checking out paragon fitness and nutrition their flame off would be the perfect helpful for recovery along with your nutrition and other physical things that you can do check that Check them out at uh, paragonfn.com. Uh, check out with CP, code CP15 for 15% off. Hope you get something out of this, and we'll have some more in-depth things coming out on this later, as well as a full interview with Jill O'Brien. All right. Yeah, get right into it. So, um, welcome to this episode of Clinically Press. Excuse the background noise. Hopefully it's minimal uh, due to the upgrades and audio. But we are here at the Granddad's Half Marathon in La Crosse, Wisconsin uh, with Kyle and then Jill O'Brien of O'Brien Physical Therapy out of West Salem. Howdy. Uh, guest, guest one on this episode. Um, so, yeah, we just got done doing some soft tissue stuff. Uh, for the half marathon and the 5k and so we figured we'd just talk about what we saw give some general tips that we think would benefit runners especially on the recovery side or I mean Jill you were looking at somebody that I think it was your first one hmm. that had all kinds of oh, problems yeah. with his shoes and the uh -huh. whole bit so what were you looking at like what do you think is contributing um, he was actually in second place so it was really interesting to find as many abnormalities and uh, imbalances as I did but um, it was just interesting to find how much uh, imbalance he had primarily in his calves. Um, definitely wore shoes uh, in an abnormal pattern. Um, had uh, pretty significant stiffness in his calves, but he was still a phenomenal runner. Just had probably just had a little bit more discomfort when he was done. Right. Um, so yeah, I encouraged him to get a running eval and maybe even try some dry needling. He was from Chicago, so hopefully he can find somebody there to help him out. Should have plenty of options in Chicago. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. shout out Alex Earl. You're going to be our connection on that one. We passed <laughs> yeah. your information along. That one's on us, for a friend. But yeah, yeah, and seeing especially with this race, which is not like every other half marathon where you've mm -hmm. got the first two miles straight downhill. Uh, which is just brutal. It's amazing that how many people do this and keep coming back, mm -hmm. but calves and quads seem to be the big mm -hmm. thing that we're seeing today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, every so. year too. It's it's general theme for me anyways. I think it's quads, or not quads, mm -hmm. but calves. Mm -hmm. I mean, just running down that hill, it sounds nice, I think, for a second. And <laughs> right, then, until you do and it. Then, and I haven't done it either, but, um, yeah, it just wrecks people's calves takes a lot more eccentric control exactly. of the muscle and so you're <laughs> lengthening the muscle while you're loading it which increases the stress and strain and usually causes a little bit much a little bit more discomfort to those and then areas. they have to run 11 miles more <laughs> right, after, and then after that <laughs> yeah. so that's i was trying to think about it in, in my biomechanicalness way of thinking like quads make sense running downhill mm -hmm. that's yes. fully mm -hmm. eccentric I don't know that I follow that as much with the calves, so I don't. I'm wondering if it's like a change in like gait, mm -hmm. almost a little bit, because you have to slow yourself down. You're almost mm -hmm. leaning backwards instead of obviously running uphill. You're gonna have a forward lean that I would think would be more hell on the calves than necessarily coming down, unless you're just breaking so hard to try and make sure. Because <coughs> when we say hill, like it's a steep hill, like yeah. it takes effort driving up it. I can't imagine what it is 
you know, obviously coming down it. Yeah, and I, I wondered that. I kind of was thinking about that earlier. If you could, because you get different philosophies from people in their strategy of that race, and if you could almost let go a little bit mm -hmm. more going down and obviously still under control but I wonder if that would almost be better on the calves instead of like really trying to pull the reins back because down. I totally agree that it's, mm -hmm. it's like the gravity easy, work for you and the inertia a little bit yeah and then you're not having to just hold on so much with the calves the whole way it definitely changes your landing mechanics when you're going downhill like that for sure you know typically you land on your heel and then you roll through your big toe but when you're going downhill like that, you really have to slow down that that foot slap. You really have to slow down and really slow into that plantar flexion. And um, I do feel like if you you might need to change your landing mechanics just for that part of the race. Oh yeah, you're almost in plantar flexion yeah, exactly. as you're as you're hitting. Mm -hmm. Oh, because back when I was pretending to run, I tried to switch <laughs> over to the mid kind of forefoot. Um, it was, oh, God, what is it now? The pose method of running, so okay. it was getting rid of the heel strike and mm -hmm. just pistoling through, just trying not to run so much through the bones and let your muscles just act as the shock absorbers. But you couldn't do that going down that hill. Mm -hmm. There's no way. Mm -hmm. And so that, I was trying to think about that. So if anybody had ever tweaked it on that, that that would be rough to go through. But yeah. I Also, a lot of thought press process throughout the, the morning and everything but if you could and you'd probably look crazy doing it but if you could intermittently run backwards yeah. right. for a little bit <laughs> right just to balance I don't think it out be too crazy yeah as long as you didn't run into anybody or yeah run the, off the cliff right or yeah <laughs> that would be the sketchy thing is worrying about all the people well the calf tightness seems minimal compared to yeah. probably the, the broken bones <laughs> you'd endure so what would be um, recovery things that we would suggest? I know one, like, we sure we're here doing soft tissue, but I don't know how you guys approach it, but I was going light. Like, I would, didn't want to dig into anybody because of the amount, obviously, of just damage that had been done from running. But, you know, people are probably going to go and just get a, hop on a foam roller. I heard somebody say something about hopping in, like, a hot bath which i don't know that i would recommend be the thing that you do today um but what would be like some of your just like this is what if you could actually have somebody that would listen to your advice you tell them <laughs> um i encourage people to you know stretch a lot kyle um i heard you say a lot drink a lot of water but then i usually tell people to alternate between ice and heat mm -hmm. um just try to dilate and constrict their blood vessels and try to pump a little bit more blood move it through a little bit more and so I think a lot of times people have a tendency when they have you know stress after a race they always tend to go towards ice uh, but I actually like telling people to alternate a little bit the ice and heat um, just I don't know I just feel like it gives them a little bit more relief I think it helps them recover a little bit better mm -hmm. I don't know if there's any actual scientific evidence on that or not but just in my you know 15 years of doing this I feel like that tends to feel the best with people makes sense mm -hmm. seems logical mm -hmm. yeah i mentioned a few times i think just a little bit of active recovery and i think most people you know just a nice day a lot of stuff going on downtown just being out walking around right honestly definitely i, I don't think it's going to be the worst thing obviously you don't want to overdo it with as much stress and everything everything underwent but i don't think you want to just go and loaf on the sofa mm -hmm. all day and do nothing either because that that'll you know, almost make you more sore yeah I did hear us all mention margaritas at least once or twice. Well, I mean, there's so many things lining is, up with yeah, Cinco de right. Mayo. That's and all everything. I can think yeah. about. Yeah, I know, I know. We, the, that definitely speeds up the recovery. We were joking about it. My brother sent me, uh, or he took a picture of how he was rehydrating and then asked, you know, would clinically press approve and took a screenshot. I can't remember if I wrote it or if AJ did. I think it was AJ. Um, that they looked at like a beer for recovery versus like Gatorade <laughs> and water and basically found that a beer was equivalent. There was no like differences between the two of them. So I took him a screenshot of that and with our friends over at Pearl Street hanging out over there. Um, it's a good way to get some carbs back into you. I'm sure a lot of people want to hear that too. That's all the, that's all the justification they need, Yeah, that, if any. It works for me. Science. Absolutely. I didn't give much for nutritional advice after but i'm sure that um, would play a role as well oh for I mean, sure you know, like eating eating better foods more quality rather than a lot of processed crap yeah i think just getting in that 
good balance again of you know carbs and protein right. just to make sure Re that you're getting replenish. it because there's a lot of people that have another half mm -hmm. tomorrow or uh, if it's not that quick of a turnaround right. you know like a week or two weeks down the road and they're either a full a couple ultras um so i mean that's a, a quick turnaround you better make sure you're getting a good recovery in oh for today. sure or it's going to be miserable. One lady was uh, PR'd her marathon yesterday. No, 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 Sunday. PR'd her marathon Sunday, PR'd her half today oh, awesome. within six days. So that oh. was pretty cool. Congrats so she must to have them. Done something wow, that's right. hardcore. Just, I don't have any ambition no. to run that much. And I think two weeks she's got a, a, a 50 miler maybe or something. So this was nothing. Yeah, as you're, we're talking about that, I see our friend Michael Borsch running around who will have to get back in his ultras and 100 milers. <laughs> that crazy, crazy guy. Yeah, I think the big one that I would, you know, the soft tissue work and, you know, everybody and their importance of foam rolling is to not overkill it. Uh, you just did a ton of, and I use damage in quotes, I mean, it's, you, you're active and just going and crushing yourself on a foam roller or a baseball or something like that is only going to contribute more to that, which can be rough on the body more than, you know, it's well-intentioned. And so kind of like we had all said, you know, stretching would be your focus today, especially when you're warm, the active recovery. You know, if you have access to things like, you know, the Normatec or recovery pump things, those could be really good because it can give you that nice progressive compression, but not over the kill. Um, you know, hopping in a cold tub, not so much necessarily for the physical flush out, but the potential of just helping your body get into a better recovery state sooner. Got a big one right there. Yeah, the current looks a little quick, yeah. though. I don't know that I would trust that at this point. But it'd be interesting to see the the way people bounce back from, uh, you know, a race in terms of getting a, a soft tissue treatment or doing some of these methods that yeah. we're talking about compared to doing nothing at all or then also overdoing it, you know, right. trying to do too much and how they bounce back and how they feel. Yeah, yeah. That, the sum is good, more is better thing. I think it, you got to be careful with it when it comes to the recovery because you really can overdo it and you're going to end up putting yourself into a worse spot unintentionally, obviously, but most definitely. What else do I want to cover? I don't know. A lot of calves. I didn't really see a whole lot other than that. Like, even in the hips, there was, like, maybe um, a, a few hip, yep. you know, issues and stuff. But it seemed like some of that stuff was going on already. Some IT band things. And yeah, I'd that was the one I was going to come back around. That might be ultimately coming into, you know, firing with the glutes and, you know, just more in terms of motor patterns and not overworking the, the TFL and some yeah. of the things. And that's a lot more than we can get into. Like Jill, you had mentioned, you want to try to give them yeah. all this help and you, right. you there's only so much right. you can do without an exam. And I did have a young out. lady who came in. Um, she had quite a bit of back pain after the race and she had never really had any back pain before. Hmm. Um, she had big, heavy, muscular legs and just with a pretty quick assessment, she had some fairly significant weakness in her core and so as you swing those big huge heavy lever arms through the air and again coming down that hill I'm sure that took her a lot of you know work to try to slow down those big heavy legs right. as she was coming down the hill so I just really encouraged her to continue to work on her core if she was hoping to keep running um, just because I mean you could tell she was really overusing her back muscles and straining her back trying to keep herself upright i'm guessing coming down that hill you think about how much s excess stress is yeah. on one step totally. think about how many steps she just took right. throughout the race too right. and that no wonder why right. she has it and it yeah. just builds up the cumulative yeah. effect so that was kind of fun to talk to her um you kind of see the light bulb going off in her head when you know you talk about those big mm -hmm. muscular legs swinging through the air with a weak core so that was fun to talk to her today nice you talked to one about it band a little bit and just that the IT band in and of itself can't really become tight because it, it's a tendon. It's just, it's huge. It yeah. And that's obviously where you feel it, but how much that actually is in your lateral quads and because you lack, mm -hmm. lack hip mm -hmm. pillar, you know, control of everything and, you know, strengthening up 
hips all the way through and tying that in can relieve so much tension off of that and then really diving into getting into that you know lateral quad which is obviously underneath the IT band but gives you that illusion of that being tight but then just like you said getting TFL to turn off to not overwork as a full-on hip flexor well yeah I mean pull on that. it's all connected by fascia right and, and tied in anyways yeah so yeah the IT band is one that oh, I get real fired up on when our students yes tight IT band let's relook at that for a second please <laughs> Why is it feeling tight? Yes, yeah. yes, we got to look at a much bigger pattern of this thing. So, we had a few uh, foot mm -hmm. issues and that type of stuff, and I think some of that was maybe, um, you know, Achilles calves stuff going down into the plantar fascia and coming up more from the calves. But some of that too, I think, was uh, lack of maybe intrinsic mm -hmm. muscle activation within the foot, and that's just becomes dead and. So it's just more of like a club, like just all one just solid thing. And, right. Um, so I was talking to one just about like gaining better control of those muscles. For and sure. Like cause you, sh you have dexterity in your fingers and hands, and obviously you're not going to have that much in your toes and feet, but you should have more than just like a, a solid just one. In theory, it down. should be similar yeah, to it. You yeah, you got to have better feeling and control. And if you don't have that, then these other bigger muscles compensate, and that's why they get overworked. I can't remember where I heard it, but I think in like Japan, they actually don't they don't refer mm -hmm. to their feet as feet. Mm -hmm. It's basically they refer to them as hands again. No kidding. Um, just because it, it does have that dexterity, and this is a whole other thing. It could be a soapbox, but like looking at shoes, and as much as shoe technology has advanced, I don't know that. And there's numbers on it somewhere that you've actually seen the injuries of runners go down. It's still the most like common activity to get hurt in mm -hmm. for whatever reason and so you know trying to add things into your training whether it's just doing you don't even have to necessarily run barefoot but doing things barefoot or like getting in the sand and walking and doing different things to help not lose that completely or you know we could get into the drops of shoes and all yep. kinds of different stuff as well but you know not relying on the shoe or the calf sleeves or the kinesiology tape to be the thing that's going to fix you sure to use it to get through something but to look on a bigger scale to actually correct it and that went back to the, you know that first guy mm -hmm. to really like drill down why that's happening and then treating running not just as a thing that we are supposed to keep being innately good at that you have to treat it as a skill especially after you lose your innate ability probably when you're a little kid and somebody puts you in a pair of shoes yeah. right you're just becoming reliant on those things, like you said, the arch support or that. And how how common it is, like most shoes, it's hard to find a zero drop shoe, which is what you're at when you're barefoot. Right. You don't have an elevation in the heel. Mm -hmm. Most shoes now have some sort of, you know, seven millimeters is not uncommon. I that's, think that's, that's that quite probably a bit, is the most common because you know? it's hard to find four millimeter right. ones. Exactly. And that's, that's hard to find. Or three. So Erica, I mean, she's not wearing a, a high heel uh, very often and most of her shoes are relatively flatter she just went to the the ultras which are yep. a, a zero drop yep. shoe and she immediately noticed a lot of just different muscles working mm -hmm. and yeah she it, you almost cause more problems that. than you're trying to fix but you gotta like let those right. problems I actually come think to fruition that's what that, uh, I think that's what that guy had yeah he did morning. so too yeah. Yep. yeah I noticed that mm -hmm. Yeah, I know at some point, you know, you look at those shoes and then even, like, dress shoes for guys, like, you're in theory wearing kind of a mini high heel yeah, yeah, exactly. all day and then, you know, shortening up that whole posterior complex, which is going to eventually cause you some sort of issue, whether you mean it to or not. Yeah, and I think getting back into something more minimal is good, but there's going to be a transition period and Always, like yeah. you just mentioned it's a skill i think that's where so vibram got themselves screwed jump into it yeah and running on concrete and pavement is and you can't you know, heel strike in those right which i think people forgot <laughs> it's not what they're really made for there's no padding there <laughs> but yeah no i think that'd yeah, be interesting you know we were talking about the grand bluff guys and dynamic physio they could run a whole clinic out here and mm -hmm. Man, would that be something that would be interesting. 
to see and you know the gate analysis and whatnot yeah i wish i would have had that a couple times a day <laughs> throw people on yes. yeah right yep Everything. anything else you want to touch on how, how was the first tr post it was awesome. granddad's treatment it was awesome experience yeah thanks for inviting me this was awesome no it was a good time it was a good time fun. people it's always seem super appreciative which is fun to do it and be here yeah Everybody's happy. They just yeah. finished the race. Even if they didn't get the, the time they wanted, they did it. Or even Most if they're in incredible pain right. afterwards, <laughs> yeah. they're usually pretty happy. The joy of finishing and not being mm -hmm. upset by that. Absolutely. Pretty good support, you know, people with this race. You know, the, a lot of spectators and family members and friends. Oh, for sure. It's hard to beat the helps. scene either. We'll take, yeah. we'll, we'll throw that in yeah. there too. Just the river in the background. and It's a good day. For sure. Anything else? Pretty basic. Yeah, that's good. All right. Jill will have an episode come, a request coming soon. We can talk See. more on your specialties and interests. Awesome. I think that would be a good – we'll get that one. So. Yeah, I didn't want to go down that bunny hole because that, that's we a could whole, be, whole we, other we could, yeah. so I do want to, but just not <laughs> right now. Awesome. <laughs> we, could, we could be here for a while. <laughs> yeah. So, well, with that, um, those are some of the tips we have on running. We'll link up uh, mobility guides. In the show notes that we had, just a couple of PDFs with some ideas on it to get started, and we'll go from there. Cool. All right, everybody, have a great rest of your, well, your weekend or whenever you listen to this. And enjoy the margaritas. Yeah, <laughs> if it, yeah. Uh, this will be re mine. this will be released after Cinco de Mayo, so we hope you enjoyed them. But obviously, most times are good times for margaritas. Thank you for checking out this episode of Clinically Pressed. Go to clinicallypressed.com for full show notes and links to everything that was covered in this episode. While you're there, you have access to all of our episodes, insights, and shorts. You can find Clinically Pressed on YouTube and any podcast outlet. If you could give us a rating, thumbs up, or review on how we are doing, we would greatly appreciate it. To get more free content delivered to your inbox, sign up for the Total Athletic Therapy Newsletter. You'll get direct links to all new clinically pressed episodes, reviews on some of the latest research in health and performance, and links to related podcasts and other items meant to help you make the complicated simple and optimize performance. Thank you for listening and see you next episode.